Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome back if you're returning. So what we're doing and what we've been doing over the last uh, few lectures is going through this EKG coding reference guide we've made available online. So those of you that are new and don't have access, what you can do is put this URL into your search bar. You'll come to this link, enter your email here. Okay, so just put your email, click submit, check your email. You'll get a link that you'll want to click on to confirm your email, and then you'll be brought to our reference guide. Okay, and that's the one that we have online here. So you'll have free access to that. If you're returning, all you'll do is go to the links, click submit, and you'll bypass that. So just checking your emails that one time deal. So where we're at, we've gone through part one. Now we're in part two, okay? And specifically in this lecture, we're going to look at sinus bradycardia, okay? So that's what we're doing. So you wanna click on that drop down, you'll get to where we are, and we're going, you know, each uh, code and reference uh, one by one to make sure we understand what we're seeing uh, in these cases, okay? So let's get started. So sinus bradycardia, okay, you'll come to that and you'll see the less than 60, okay, and that's beats per minute is what we're referring there. And so in sinus rhythm or sinus bradycardia, we're looking for sinus rhythm. So you need two things. You need the presence of sinus rhythm and you need a heart rate, a ventricular or actually atrial rate, okay, of less than 60 beats per minute, okay? So it's sinus rhythm, okay, plus an atrial rate. Notice I didn't say ventricular. Okay, atrial rate less than 60 beats per minute. So often you may have the ventricular rate given to you by the EKG machine, okay? And sometimes you have the atrial rate, and this the atrial rate is what we're focusing on. So specifically, when we're determining sinus rhythm, we're looking at the P waves, okay? And when we're looking at the atrial rate, we're also looking at the P waves. So pretty much as long as you focus on the P waves, that's where you'll find the answer, okay? So again, that is what you're looking for. The P waves and then a rate less, an atrial rate less than 60 beats per minute. And this is in adults. Obviously, if you're, you know, dealing with children, they tend to have a little faster range uh, or, you know, a higher, lower uh, norm of, uh, normal or lower limit of normal. So it may be a little higher. But anyways, in adults, less than 60 beats per minute. The P wave axis is pretty much what you would expect in sinus rhythm between zero and positive 75 degrees, okay? And P wave axis, just like any other area, has an axis, the ST segment, the QRS complex, the T wave, and so forth. And the P wave axis should be between zero and positive 75, so zero degrees and positive 75 degrees, okay? So that is the normal P wave axis. Now, if you recall, and you can go back a few lectures, look at the one that's called sinus rhythm. Okay, not only do we go through this P wave axis, but you actually learn what sinus rhythm is and why you see what you see. Okay, not simply memorizing, oh, upright P waves in lead two, okay, which you know you will see. But why do we see that? Okay, so if you're unclear, if this is your first time joining us, go back to the sinus rhythm lecture, okay, or if you have a course, you'll obviously have more detail, and that's a key one for you to look at, okay? So sinus rhythm, axis there. So notice that in lead one, we have these upright P waves, lead two, the same thing, okay? If you look at these lateral leads, V4, V5, and V6, you can see them all there. And then if you look at AVR, which is this one here, you see them inverted, okay? So this is part of V1, so we should probably, that's not included. All right. So again, if you are want to know why you would see upright P waves in these leads, why inverted P waves in these leads, then go back and listen to that lecture. I think it's very helpful. Uh, and it's, you know, a lot of your colleagues actually probably don't know. All right. So it's something that you could be the one that informs them and just helps to spread uh, EKG education because we know that it's undertaught at many levels. Now, the same morphology, obviously, with sinus rhythm, you want these P waves to look the same. So look at V1 or lead two, and notice all these P waves and these rhythm strips look the same. Notice in V1, we have these biphasic positive and then negative P waves. That is normal in this lead, okay? Um, in lead two, okay, we see these upright P waves. All right, they all look the same. That's that morphology, meaning their look. Now, why they're positive and negative and why that's normal in V1, 
Okay, we obviously go through in much detail, and we'll look at it when we look at atrial abnormalities, but this is something that we discussed in detail in the course. We'll get to that shortly, okay? Now, again, we mentioned that the atrial rate, so we know that sinus rhythm is present based on what we saw, so you can check this one off, okay? Now we need that atrial rate to be less than 60 beats per minute. So how do we do that? Well, we have to find the rate, and we're using those P waves that we circled. So we know that the standard uh, 12 lead ECG, which is 10 seconds in duration, if you multiply that by six, you get 60 seconds, which equals one minute. And what that tells you is if you count the number of P waves going across, multiply by six, you can get the atrial rate, okay? So the atrial rate in beats per minute. Okay, so let me see if I can erase some of that so it's not in the way. So all these P waves that we circled, so notice them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? So you'd put nine here, nine times six is 54. 54 is less than that 60 beats per minute, so again, checks that off. So that's how you find the atrial rate. Obviously, there's other ways to find it because this is a regular uh, atrial rate, so you can count the number of thick lines between each one, okay? So if you were to use this P wave here and this one, you see where it starts, about here, okay? And you find the next one that starts about there. You count the number of thick lines between them, one, two, three, four, five, okay, between five and six. So you would do 300, which is set, divided by five is 60, okay, but it's between those, and 300 divided by six is 50, so the rate is between there, okay? So we got 54 beats per minute. So obviously it's less than 60, and it meets that criteria. So again, sinus rhythm, if you're unsure of why we see what we see, go back and listen to that lecture, as I said. Look for sinus rhythm and look for the atrial rate. Atrial rate, not ventricular rate, should be less than 60 beats per minute. And if you have these two, you have sinus bradycardia. So this is an excellent example of sinus bradycardia, and hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. 
I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.